story time again. And Mickey says, come on in. It's time to talk about love. And Kingdom Age love is at hand, and he is the Lord of love. Um, I'm Daniel, love from love, hope from hope, and peace from our prince. Thereof he returns, and he comes upon a whirlwind of love that he is pouring out over all flesh, as the prophet Joel foretold. For this is a big reset button, this COVID thing. It's got good and it's got bad, but those of love are, are, are starting to shine because they're realizing the true priorities in, in, in love. And as uh, Luke 172 foretold, it's time for our Prince of Peace to prove the mercy that he promised long ago to our long to our fathers and forefathers as we take time to remember his holy rainbow covenant of peace that was spoken over all of us and there has been a, a mystery of God that is now revealed. Listen to my uh, videos. You'll come to understand. You'll see the light. And the light is of love. It's impossible for our truth of love to lie. And so uh, receive his refiner's fire from heaven. Let your fire of love explode within your heart. For those who love are born of God and know God because God is love. And uh, that is born again. If, if someone doesn't have their love on, then they must be as little children, Jesus said. They must uh, reflame their love. And because so many people have let their love wax cold. And uh, his spirit of prophecy has promised Israel their gift of love, love in the last days. And the Lord God knew he was going to send that now, according to Isaiah uh, 62, 2. He has given them a new name, Chrislam, uh, because now the covenant has been uh, over all them, over all Israel from uh, Jerusalem. The lion of Zion roars, love, peace be still. And one like a son of man with a crown of gold on his head and a razor sharp sickle in his hand came forth upon the same cloud as uh, uh, Matthew 24, as Revelation 14. It is time for the everlasting gospel with the everlasting covenant that has everlastingly been over all mankind. And in a very real way, the words of the Kingdom Age covenant proved and restored to its former glory speak loud volumes because it always has secretly over all mankind uh, and those words are I shall forgive your iniquity and remember it no more and uh, then the Lord says in his kingdom age new covenant Jeremiah 31 verse 33 to 35 that now no one shall need to know anything more about him he invites ignorance once people realize he is totally loved over them and he brings no judgment to us we bring judgment to ourselves that's the truest truth and in this hour this is no better truth than the most perfect will of god is the oneness of man in love it is time that we love our enemies even and this is critical in this this hour and as his harvest uh, word goes forth of amos 9 it's time for the sower to, to overtake the reaper. And the hiddenness of uh, Revelation 10.7 is come alive because the kingdom age covenant is given to Israel and all mankind, Jeremiah 32.27, to prove once and for all that Isa Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the word of God, has never been the God of Christians at all. He's always been the God of all mankind, and that has gotten lost. The everlasting gospel must go again to all nations, to all people, because uh, religious Christians do not even believe John the Beloved's words of 1 John 4, 7. And by the book of Revelation uh, 14, John the Beloved prophesied that his words, not mine, would have to go again to everyone in the world because people didn't get it the first time. And that truth is those who love are born of God and do know God because God is love. 
So born again, just flame on. That's all it's been. It's been way over spiritualized. And um, so it's time for passion to come alive in this hour. And if only for a moment of a moment, we should all heed this truth of the Lord's firework season of his adoration over the entire race of Adam. For the Lord has always urged us to become as little children once again. And his end time son of righteousness is our guarantee of eternal love since his forgiveness is the shining crown of glory of his unconditional love. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten love so that whosoever would love uh, should not perish but have everlasting love and everlasting life. And the truth of love is that he loves and he forgives. And uh, uh, the harvest is now, right now, it begins. And all nations have become the Lord's because they were always his. And the seventh trumpet has sounded first because the first is last and the last is first. And the harvest is now, as Revelation 14:14, 14, 14, the sower of seeds does overtake all the harvesters. Like the turtle whipped the rabbit's butt in the Aesop's fables. And the angel of the new covenant, the kingdom age new covenant, restored as Peter said it would be in Acts 3.21. And the angel of the new covenant took the sickle for the harvest uh, of earth. It's way over ripe now. And much of the harvest is seemingly rotting in the fields of our salvation's most blessed eternal glory. But he's always right on time, and our Lord shall deliver all those of love. But this event of the events also, people need to understand, it is the seventh of the, uh, the, uh, of the age of grace, which in turn triggers the kingdom age falling into place by the correct gift of prophecy interpretation. So here the seventh trumpet sounds as the oneness of God arises and the oneness of man arises because he is giving us unity. In the Garden of Gethsemane, that was his most passionate prayer that we would be one as he is one. And he knew he was not wasting his words. He knew he was sending that covenant to all mankind. And it has been activated Watch my video called The Prophetic Word of Angelina Jolie, the last 15 minutes. Uh, I have my rock star debut and I give the covenant to all mankind. From this point onward, that everlasting Father's steadfast love shall not depart from any of his children, nor shall his new covenant of kingdom age peace be removed again. It is established. Uh, and it sh shall now bring complete fulfillment to Isaiah 54's word of manifested hope. And in these days of Daniel 12, Satan has been removed. He cannot be the accuser of the brethren anymore because God says, I forgive your iniquity, all ye my people of love, and shall not remember it anymore. So Satan has been fired. <laughs> and I am the latter day Daniel of Daniel 12, 13, who arises to embrace my destiny because uh, prophecy was never about foretelling the future. It was about making the future. And in this hour, the Lord says, I shall return my terrifying anger and stop the fast rising great tribulation if all ye people of the world will give me the desire of my heart for us to be one and to start showing some love. It's as simple as that. And our Lord of all flesh is the mediator of his own word of the kingdom age covenant that he always stood mute upon because he knew he was sending it. And uh, Jeremiah 32, 27 did proclaim and does, uh, I am the God of all flesh. And that is why this is the religion of the uh, one world religion. John 10, 16, one good shepherd over all the flocks of man rising in love as he pours out his spirit of love and saves us from ourselves by our love exploding once we realize that we have nothing but desolate heritages. In Isaiah 49, 8's prediction there was 100%. 
because for 2,000 years, Christians have been running around trying to save people with their love lights on. All people love. And if they don't, they better be born again because they would perish by the unforgivable sin and have no light for their next body that's made of light. And our Prince of Peace remembers the word that he gave a thousand generations ago by his promise unto Abraham in Genesis 12 to bless everyone on earth by him and through him. So now he shall. Thus saith the Lord, Know that this is an everlasting covenant of Jeremiah 31 that will never be forgotten, and by it and by its power of its literal word, all canons of all religions are now shattered because it was never seen as literal as it is, as Daniel 12:7 foresaw. The shattering of the power of the holy people happens automatically as the gross darkness falls away, as Isaiah 60 foretold, as the sun of love arises in the splendor of his magnificence and glory. And this shall be the covenant that I shall now make with Israel, and that shall evermore un overflow unto all flesh, that I shall always put my law of love onto their minds, and evermore I shall write my law of love on their hearts, and I shall always be their God, and they shall all be my people always, with all full, full kingdom, age, authority, and rights. And this new covenant establishes equality among all people, for he is a respecter of none, and by his spirit he says, I am the Lord, and he is the majesty of majesties. And because the Lord is revealing his unconditional love, never again shall anyone need to be teach anyone else about his eternal forgiveness. That has always been over everyone, keeping their love light on. His love has transcended absolutely all doctrine, all religion. And this is the sickle of his word that is comes forth with utter truth so that people can finally worship him in spirit and truth. It is written that those who walk with the spirit are under no condemnation and take it to the bank that that means with your love light on regardless of what you believe or don't believe. It's never been about us. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. It's always been about what he is doing for us and has done for us because he was slain according to the word of God before the foundation of earth because he, he, he has come to redeem all mankind, everyone that will keep their love light on. And if people don't want to believe that uh, it was not the, 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 the great uh, uh, commandment and uh, to go forth, <laughs> It was always to flame up love, love. It wasn't about believing in him. He is love. Those who love are born of God and know God because God is love. He's not a petty Lord. And because the Lord is revealing his unconditional love that is bottomless, uh, people will come to see everything in a whole different light. And paranoia in this world can go the way of the dinosaur, says Daniel because it is obsolete, all religion of condemnation. And it is for the kingdom age, the age of the golden world. That is the only doctrine uh, that we love each other and love our enemies as ourselves. And we have to make it count. And every soul ever born has known him from the least to the greatest. And that has been exactly as it has been. Even people like Morg of Morg Official, the lawless one who would die by a sword in Revelation 13, 13, because he's a sword swallower. He's got the 666 on his wall behind him as well, Hyperion, uh, just punching uh, the Morg, Morg Official. And uh, I've got a few videos about Morg as well. But uh, uh, he doesn't want to see that God is alive. He was hurt by religion and uh, it became evil to him and uh, scarred him because it was condemning on a little boy and I it was trauma and I my heart goes out to him and uh, uh, he doesn't believe in the God of the uh, Judeo-Christian and neither do I 
because that God has never existed. Mankind added his words, our words, to the words of tradition, the words of religion, to the Lord's words right there in the early thousands of years ago. Early uh, Christian fathers grabbed the Hebrew prophecy of the kingdom age new covenant out of place invalid in a spot that's been bastardizing the meaning the truest meaning of that literal word of god that was always foreseen only as metaphoric because it was never officially given but early christian fathers grabbed that covenant and said we are israel and they committed identity theft and then they ignored that it said it was for the latter days for israel and all mankind and if god didn't do that he would be a liar So it doesn't matter if, if, if a, a fish is dumb and can't perceive the water around him. Take him out of the water, he would perish. And we would perish by letting our love go out. That is the unforgivable sin, to let our love light go right out. So uh, evermore the Lord says, I shall forgive the wickedness of all flesh. And uh, as long as the people are keeping their love alive they shall be under no condemnation in the end and uh, uh, the lord says that his kingdom age judgment day shall be of eternal rewards so let the fear of love stop because everybody in this world has been arguing not over a false god there is no such thing as a false god. There is only one God, and he's never been jealous. That was metaphoric, as most of his wrath and judgment uh, scripture has been metaphoric. We bring the judgment upon ourselves. And the fear of love must stop because uh, it's never been about a false god. It's a false understanding of his love. Love without forgiveness isn't love at all, and he gives forgiveness 70 times 7. Um, uh, a loving homosexual is just as beloved as a loving atheist, and just as beloved as a, a loving uh, Protestant or Islamic or Hindu or Buddhist. It does not matter. Uh, scripture is profitable for teaching and for rebu re rebuke and for prosperity and scripture all scripture is good to reprove us and to teach us but one thing's for sure if we have not love we are empty and it's all been in vain and that's the obsolete nature of all that was before because now that the kingdom age covenant has been given out in the video called the uh, uh, the prophetic word of Angelina Jolie that everything prior is obsolete and that's the way it is according to hebrews 8 so let the wise see that the lord's new covenant had to be given twice just like the ten commandments were so once and for all the truth of romans 6 can finally be established securely that even though the wages of sin brings physical death the free gift of god is eternal life in Christ for everyone born of love whom he has always been and so let the wise know that even the smartest beliefs have never mattered to anyone born of love especially now in these days as he openly gives his kingdom age new covenant to all flesh and the spirit says now shall salvation from my great white throne overflow from Jerusalem and my and my and my seat of majesty and he does this to cut time short so all flesh will not perish, exactly as he said in Matthew 24, 22. For to cut these days short of the age of grace, the only way to do that is to intellectually start the kingdom age early. So as we put out the lights and go down the Betty by and put out the fire, ask yourself, ask yourself, do you have your love light on? Remember uh, Led Zeppelin? Robert Plant says, Does anybody remember how to laugh? Let the fire rage. Light on. <laughs>
Eden is ahead of us, people. Love from love, hope from hope. May the Lord's face shine upon you and bless you in your getting up and then you're going out and stay safe in these days of the trial of all flesh that comes to keep us from the temptation not to change by God's word of patience. Please have patience with me. I am allowed to pass on these uh, messages because it is the vision of Habakkuk 2, King James and the Jewish Bible. And it, it comes at the end and shall not lie and yea, though I have been transgressed by wine, al alcoholic, the just shall live by my faith, even though I have been, uh, my soul has not been always upright because I live in Canada and I, for pain, <laughs> I've smoked uh, medical reefer. Remember that uh, reefer madness? <sighs> I'm mad about God and not mad at God. I'm mad over him. I love, I love to love. And I wake up every day knowing that I am the one from Isaiah 41, one who would rise from the north in Canada accurately as it predicted, and that I would call upon love's fire every day to burn in me. Because the bottom line is, as that happens, the love that he's given me, that his message through me, it shall become the mortar that will fall upon all the leaders of the earth in a day to come as they put down their nuclear weapons so that Armageddon cannot happen. It's nuclear. Zachariah says, the eyes would consume away in sockets, tongue, same thing, and flesh as they stand. We can now only have one future, and it's the future of Isaiah 2. In the latter days, no matter what uh, translation you read, it, it, it says, in the latter days, man will beat their swords into plowshare and learn the ways of war no more. That is not in the same timeline as an Armageddon. We are simply at a place where we have a choice to make. The wheat will come with me and the terror shall stay behind. I am Elijah, the latter-day Daniel, Daniel 12, 13.